Imagine. Can you even imagine? Imaginations are powerful. And most people just let it lay there, like a deflated balloon. It's easier to go with the flow. How do you enter a dark space? That space between knowing and not knowing. You know, until you know, so many people don't want to look. You just don't know. They don't want to know. We, all humans, we tell stories. What they don't already know. Darkness. I feel so conflicted, like all the time. Contradiction. Deep breaths and forward motion. It feels so dark. Wait. Are you going to spend your life hiding? <laughs> And scary. Some people stay scared. Without risk, there's no reward. I've been afraid my whole life. You have to be... Of everything. Aware. At all times. We often allow ourselves to succumb to the fear of not knowing. You need to know what's going on. But if you step back and realize that... What's going to happen next? We don't ever know what's going to happen. It doesn't work like that. And... Everything in between. Perception? It's the 
in between that counts. I just think there should be an in-between space. We are born and then we die. For some of us who don't fit one mold or another. But in between? The space between love and... Pain? In between those two little words? Hurt people. Generation after generation. Hurt people. Pain is a shared human experience. I guess we all end up sharing all that pain. Because everyone experiences it. Whether we want to or not. Turns out that is when you're most likely to explode. And it is absolutely contagious. And the collateral damage? No one is a silo unto themselves. Some people see themselves like that. That ain't my business. Maybe I'm like a child hiding in plain sight. All the time. With my hands over my eyes. Have you ever stood in front of multiple mirrors? Thinking I can't be seen? So that you can see yourself from any angle. I just want to be seen. Depending on how you turn, you know? Two things can be true at once. There's another way. Even if it feels like a contradiction. That's true. Always. Not sure when I first became aware of that. Time doesn't seem real anymore. Still true. I learned the hard way. That's what I tell myself. But it's definitely some truth I've absorbed. If you bottle up your emotions, but life, remind myself, doesn't get the memo. Intergenerational trauma is real. Keep shaking that bottle. You carry that. There's always more than meets the eye. But you know what else is real? It's about what? Intergenerational clarity. Everyone. Truth never hurt anyone. Hurt people. We hurt people. Now, less than the whole truth can hurt. A lot. Listen, we all got to go on our own journeys. Alone. Shoot, some people. In a world of other isolated people, you can maybe hear in the distance, but ultimately alone. Honey. And forced to constantly. Some people be real tangled up. Witness yourself. In themselves. But so many people get twisted up and soothe themselves with lies. So even in that, we're not alone. You can't do the same thing every day and wonder why your life isn't any different. Maybe we started standing in so many lines that we got used to that. I'm just out here, waving my arms and screaming at the top of my lungs. So now we just line up, waiting for our turn to say something. Some people think that they scream and yell out a complaint. 
scream and yell loud enough, then something might change. But for someone. It's apparent that some people would rather just keep moving. I'm not like that. We prefer to just keep going. But someone. To let me know I'm not just out here alone. Because they caught a glimpse of what's hurting some other people. And it felt uncomfortable. When you witness someone in pain, they just focus in on the wrong thing. It changes how you move through the world. It is uncomfortable. It changes all of us. Sometimes people don't realize that being aware of a threat. I don't know who is out there. It is not the same as being fearful or defensive. There is no comfort to be had. Or what? None. Fear can make you do terrible things. And I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy, but yeah. <laughs> There are a lot of stupid people out there and cause you to <laughs> they piss me off. Cause you to hurt others. I don't need people. You see that in people. Crowds aren't for me. Some people only invite friends and family in. But that, uh, that's different. Never alone. They start out just being aware. I notice the strangest things. They start to assume the worst. The tiniest, seemingly insignificant, but incredibly meaningful little... And that leads to these unnecessary defensive moves crumbs of life that people unwittingly well it begins to look a lot more like offense drop every day and someone could find themselves very much on the offense some people spill their life all over you through a series of seemingly unrelated events and the bad stuff stains or you see how someone who started out just trying to nourish something everything could do you think that's possible if you let careless people stomp around in your garden it's up to you they will change things clear the space the world can seem like a pretty scary place you have to take more steps back, away. Sometimes the distance. To take it all in. Just provides the time. Time allows you to realize nothing changed. To recognize the patterns of behavior we all fall into. Accept your perspective. When we accept truth, without fighting it. It seems like we just get better at recognizing the pain in others. It's why we need each other. And we step back and just observe. We learn what role we played in producing the pain. When you're a kid, and just, I don't know, being a kid, you can see how two things can... Even if you see something what one of us does two things can be true at once you don't yet have the wherewithal it will eventually touch someone else more actually to put it in the proper context and when you get a little distance you'll see the truth 
a part. That had been there all along. The reality is... A part. A part of something bigger. We are all part of a bigger story. Do you ever feel like you don't belong? James Baldwin said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. No, it ain't gotta be all that hard. Wherever you are. One we may not even realize. An instant. That's all it takes. One moment can ripple out into another. From the get, my parents taught us that whatever we do will affect the rest of us. Can you see how that one ripple in the ocean can find other waves to join? That's just the truth of it. Let's face it. One instant and everything can change. That's where it's at. Me? <laughs> All that space between here and now. Between to become the full version of... I'm straight levitating through life. All of us. All of you. <laughs> Ain't it funny? I said all of you, and you think I meant all of you, when really I meant all of you. The fact that illusions exist. Unexpected surprises can help us realize we must not look away. How instantly. It should demonstrate that things are not always as they seem. Something can change. Do you search in the darkness for the thing you do not know what is? Finding questions is more fun than making up answers. The key to success is failure. It is truth. As sure as the stars shining down on us. Have you all been watching the news? I think there are many questions, and the answers evolve Do you allow time in every new moment. For the light to spill into the darkness. So it'll come back to you. Have you witnessed what is happening on the West Coast? If the light is there and you reflect. From time to time, what if the universe like all of it, we've got to zoom out, you know? What if it's like this giant kaleidoscope? Do you realize that rainbows are illusions? But don't let that fool you. I mean, you can see them, but you can never approach them. And it's different for each of us. It has to do with refracting light through water droplets because of all the little bits that make up the reflections. I do still love them. My whole life has been about... I love that you can't necessarily ever reach one. Me trying to figure out where I belong, you know? But the flaw would be to try. Even if we predict and are correct, we exist on a spectrum. And we can't let ourselves forget that. But what if those bits are the parts of life that make it worthwhile? We have to learn how to listen. I was probably nine or ten. We went to a circus. I don't know if it was my first time, but it definitely felt like it. Recognize. Elephants are these majestic mountains 
that move with such grace. She, she was so, I stood so close, you know. That feels more like when something's all blurry, necessary. Probably because you're too close to the problem to even take it all in. It was the first time I remember really being in awe of something. I love that feeling. She was alive. I loved that feeling. Observe. She had these long eyelashes that reached out from each of her eyes. Like arms extended, welcoming you in for a hug. You can see it. My grandma was my hero. Whenever she'd see me, she would open her arms up to the heavens and spin around and say, We've all been waiting for you. So gentle. All of us. But complete. There's only ever one we. Breathtaking. You can see it reflected. Tucked behind her was a baby elephant, a miniature replica, but the clamp and the chain around its little ankle, it was bigger than the one on the mother. See? Reflecting. They still got some fight in them. We start with a big old chain. It's got to be really heavy. They can fight all they want, but they're not going anywhere. Fascinating. I look down at at my ankle. It's all a reflection. But I felt like there was this... People are like weather events. Enormous weight. Don't you think? Holding down my foot. Like a slight breeze can shift into this damaging system that destroys anything in its path. I don't want to be like that elephant. It occurs due to a, a, a combination of phenomena. There are times when I'll catch someone's eye. It could be a stranger or even a friend. And I see that same look. Unrelenting and so unexpected. Like a learned helplessness. And it hurts. Reflect on that. It hurts because I feel powerless to do anything about it. The weather reminds us of the cyclical nature of all things. There is only one we. Weather events, we call them. All people are the same. We understand that each event is individual but they still exist as one. All people are the same. Events in one area impact other areas. Just as a river finds many ways back to the sea, each person is different. And naturally, only the people in that particular area, those at the center of the event, would consider it significant. But think about it. It's always been true. But does it make sense to stand on the other side of the world to describe your weather? Some fools be walking around thinking they're owed something. Would you really get angry? When the tsunami roared and people were desperately reaching out for something to hold on to while you marveled at the sun glistening off your ice-cold lemonade? They've got no plan. Would you insist people not scream out? That's just it, isn't it? Would you demand they appreciate the sunlight? 
Say less. Can you take in the whole picture? Less is actually more. We can't unsee what we've seen or unhear words rooted in pain or unspeak our feeble attempts at control. Maybe we're all like trees that have not yet been planted. Millions of acres are destroyed. Each of us growing layers that will reveal how much growth occurred. But the wind keeps carrying the flames. Ripple effect and all. How some trees never receive the nourishment they deserve. It's all related, isn't it? But each of them is driven to survive. Typhoons on the other side of the world. Trees don't have perspective. Create winds that spread fires over here. Trauma is trauma to them. There is only one we. Why don't we explain things like that to kids? If a tree senses a tree near it in distress. You know, if you think about it, it sends nutrients through its root system. It's pretty evident, don't you think? Do you think we can do that too? That hurt people hurt people? Like, find a way to be there? When the pain is so great for each other? In my family, we remind each other about what matters. I mean, you know. It seems that a person is less able to ensure that they won't automatically pass on some of that pain. There is so much useful information that we never learn in school. I gotta believe that someday they're gonna learn, but... It's really amazing when I learn something new, how sometimes when you learn something, like anything I didn't know yet, when it all fits, I file it away. And it makes sense, like in my mind. When I learn something, I mean a lot of new things to learn or hear something I've never heard before. I used to simply accept this new information. But then somewhere along the way, I started resisting new information. We got to talk about it. You know how it is if you fill up a pitcher of water and you just let the water keep flowing? There comes a time when you can't put any more in. We got to. I'm not sure how it happened, but some days... My brain feels full. Like, not in a satisfying way, but whatever capacity I have, there isn't room for more, you know? I mean... Like, I'm trying to take things in, but... With everything going on. I just can't take anymore. My family is fortunate. We're all mostly healthy. And under normal circumstances, we're doing great. Everything is unpredictable. My dad has these ulcers. And constantly changing. They can get pretty bad. And sometimes he has to go stay in the hospital when they flare up or whatever. My grandma is weak. Two things can be true at once. 
I mean, she's strong, but she's delicate, you know. Can't keep her out of the church. But my mom, she's healthy, but she has asthma. Not bad, but she gets treated for it and all that, so it's real. Science is real. But she's also a teacher. Like, the best kind of teacher that every child wants and needs. The kind of third grade teacher that changes you as a person. My whole life, practically as far back as I can remember, I've wanted to be a teacher. Every year, she has grown adults come back and visit her. Like, sometimes when they graduate, but every few years, checking in and letting her know how important she is. She's that kind of teacher. So it's not like she can't teach. Everything is so... But since spring, eight of her former students have passed away, died. Temporary. Eight from all over. Not all kids, but a couple. But, like, the grown-up ones, too, died. Dead, gone. But see... Gone. Everything that has come together is what connects you. So now, we all just worry about each other a little more. And I guess it's good. Everything exists on a spectrum. In a way. Because we say things out loud a little more. Every one. But now, when everything is upside down. And while so many of us get lost. Lost is a teacher. Lost in the illusions. I read that somewhere. Do you think we only get what we can handle? Or that we handle what we get? You gotta get clear. Pretty quick. My dog's older now, but there was a time when she gave birth, starting a little family of her own. <laughs> it's hard, but do you ever think about that? Like, are pets having more than one set of babies? Is that like a second marriage or... I mean, she stuck it through. Twice. Because you don't get a whole lot of second chances to get it right. Except... I've been trying. One... did... die. They were so little. Susie, uh, my dog, is a hoarder. She had this weird habit where... She hid little bits of food. She must have been starved as a pup herself. I just get in my car and... The puppy found a little pile. The little stashes were never really that big. I mean, a handful, if that. Drive around on roads I've never been on. But to a puppy... Especially one this big. It was a lot. <laughs> Depending on where you begin your journey in this world, a lot can affect your trajectory. Too much. See, the puppies had just started drinking water, too. The vet said that it probably had a little belly full of water, and then... I do that sometimes. Then, eating the hard dog food so quickly, the result was that the poor baby couldn't breathe. There are these... Oh, like, 
airway was filled with this growing mass of adult dog food and soaking up all that water and expanding. Turning points. Poor Susie. (laughs) She was a mess. She only had two that next time. I just wonder if maybe her body held the memory and she convinced herself she could only handle two at a time. In life. That's why you have to be clear on who you are and what you stand for. So the universe conspired on her behalf by only giving her what she could handle the second time? Simple as that. Sometimes, some things don't seem related. I let myself scream all of the things I wish I would have said. But they are. A massive emotional dump. A part. And when I'm done, I'm usually exhausted and heaving. I mean, I don't know what other families do. My heart is always pounding, and I'm out of breath. But I'm more aware that I'm alive because my heart can beat so hard. But in our home, we accept that we are one unit. Sometimes it feels like my heart will just burst out of me, and I won't know what to do. You just need to zoom out a bit. I'll just sit there looking down at my heart, escaping my body. To get clear. Grasping in vain. I imagine I'll follow it around. You know, like, give it some distance, but watch where it goes. What's that game? I have a feeling my heart knows where I belong. And maybe if I can figure out a way to let it take the lead, I won't always feel so lost, so misplaced. A centipede? Or no, a snake. You know that game? Maybe. Where you're just snaking your way through the world, trying to find space. A part of something bigger. Trying to get the little things along the way. But you don't want to get tangled up, so you got to keep moving while you make sure you don't turn on yourself. People come and go. Yeah. Real life isn't much different. Things come and go. Communicating merely with words is bound to fail. Because communication is a full sensory experience. We are. Walking and breathing contradictions. You have to slow down. We walk around saying that we believe this or that, but in our own lives we're too busy for this or that, or to do anything about it. Your brain senses and takes things in quickly every second of every day. And then we walk around realizing how hypocritical it is of us but we don't process all of that information consciously. That takes time and effort. And how we are those people we hate? We all live by the same sun and moon and field of stars. Truth doesn't move. It's constant. Just look to the sky. No one color is better than another move like a jellyfish. I love jellyfish. I love rainbows. Yeah, it's cheesy, whatever. If you stare at a jellyfish long enough, you start to feel it in your chest. The undulations matching your heartbeat. And the spectrum has room for every color. 
and jellyfish, they might be the ones who know how all this works. Every nuanced shift is welcome there, and... Maybe they're the ones who have this all figured out because there are so many different kinds, yet they all coexist. If you're in the light... They've been around for over 500 million years because they adapt and change. Seems like we could learn from that. If the light is there and you reflect... And immortal jellyfish? See, they perform this thing called transdifferentiation. You'll see all the beautiful colors of the rainbow. See, they go through these distinct stages of life. And once they're adults... And how? Or whatever. If conditions become unbearable, or if they're faced with a predator, they can regress back into an earlier stage of being. When you let go of picking a favorite. Back down to a polyp. And like... Start over. And just absorb the rainbow. They sort of reinvent themselves. Like, start again. As many times as they want. Deep breaths and forward motion. Because you can't go back. We can be like that, too. Breathe it in. My dad always says, today is the first day of the rest of your life. We all share this world. Today. Sometimes. Everything can change. Especially when the earth may appear bare. We can adapt and change. Underground, just beneath the surface. And maybe when we do it well or enough. Anticipating the proper season. We won't even have to regress as much. There is new growth. Truth shines like a street lamp. Just waiting to be revealed spilling light over all of us. <laughs> New blossoms. I don't believe in fate and all that. Simply awaiting the space to appear. Do you know what the great rift is? Sometimes I do feel like... Torn. No? It's not that complicated if you break it down. Oh, well, despite how we might feel sometimes, it isn't a term to describe the current state of affairs in the world. It's about we, period. It's where the shadows of the Milky Way come together. It's the blending, the overlap. When I hear other people with stories so similar and so different, we are the different little bits. Everything becomes clearer. That make life worthwhile. It happens not in spite of all the bits that come together. The further away you are from the source of pain. We need the darkness. We are all a part of something. But because... They all contribute.
part of something so much bigger than we even know. We need the darkness to appreciate the light. Maybe. Maybe. If we can stay open to new people and new things. Beyond the individual. There are lots of things that contribute. Maybe it becomes easier to start again with the new direction. We all have a lot of work to do. Yeah. So if we just do the work to accept to be better ourselves, remind ourselves about everything that there's another way. Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. And maybe as we stretch, see how far you can get. And then I dare you to reach a little bit further. Reach further than we ever imagined possible because we can always go just a little bit further. Focus all your energy on balance. There is only one we. Reality hits hard. Once we accept that, change can be a good thing. We can start working together. Then we can just sit back. To see that there are ripple effects. And take comfort. We don't always realize. In the darkness. <sighs> humanity reflecting humanity. Last year... I was afforded an incredible opportunity to live in Tanzania for a while. To be uprooted from my life, from everything I knew, everyone, life changing. A phrase I learned, it stays with me. Milima haikutani lakini binadamu hukutana. That's Swahili. Milima haikutani, lakini binadamu hukutana. And it means mountains do not meet, but people do. It seems to me that even though we all got our own journeys to go on, but that hu and hukutana, it's habitual. That maybe the habitual tense. Maybe when we find other people that love us, that we can trust. So it means again and again and again. 99.9% .9 of all things that have lived on this planet are gone. This could be a turning point. Maybe. For all of us. That means we are a part of the 0.01% that still have an opportunity to change. It feels like a core belief. We are just getting started. Then our journeys intersect. May we all meet again and again and again. Not only us, we are one unit all the people on the entire planet. And again.